welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, please hit the like, and if you want to get a hold of me, you can email jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Now on with the talk. So I thought I was kind of screwed that I wouldn't be able to find a Waltham mainspring for this pocket watch that I just took apart. So, and I disassembled it and I cleaned it. So the mainspring turned out to be one of these. So I had a Perrin mainspring for a Waltham 16S and it looks really good. It had a TR end, that's TR. So that's a hole and uh, there's a code for those ends, but anyway. It ended up being the right end uh, hole piece for the arbor and for the part that connects to the barrel. So a little knockout tab on the edge of the barrel and that the TR fits into that knockout tab and then it winds around. So, and this particular barrel is a little bit of a pain in the butt. So there it is there uh, up close. Let me put my back of my hand here. There it is up close. And it's kind of a floating barrel. So you put the mainspring into the main barrel and then the arbor is attached to the top part here. I'm not going to touch it attached to the top part here and then you have to kind of push the top part down and rotate it kind of against the mainspring against this the actual uh, clockwise counterclockwise of the mainspring wh whichever way it goes so you rotate it down and angle it and then eventually it snaps in and then when you turn it it connects to the uh, the arbor connects to the hole in the mainspring so that was a bit of luck. I went through some of my supplies and I only had one of these. And I'm like, oh my God, I found it. Out of all these and I got other mainsprings that I have. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to order this. I couldn't find any when I ordered it. I went to cousinsuk.com and I couldn't find any mainsprings. Uh, this is the this is the puppy dog that it came out of, right? So there's the hole that goes around the arbor here. And this part here was snapped, but it didn't matter because this mainspring was set old like me. Anyway, <laughs> so it's a uh, Sunday morning right now, and I'm going to just put this watch back together nice and easy. Um, I may not go on camera as I take the jewels, the jewel caps off and oil the, uh, the caps and settings. Uh, don't know because that's a lot of you've seen me do that a million times but I will go on camera for the reassembly and see what this what this thing is gonna how this uh, watch is actually gonna operate so away we go all right rose are red violets are blue and yes I put a glove on pretty cool so there we go that's the case remember how gummed up that was I tossed that into my ultrasonic cleaner cleaned the heck out of it and then I oiled the inside and now the uh, case I can touch the outside of this because the owner will also touch the outside. Now this, the crown or the crown snaps back. See that? And then back into position. So it now works. It was a bit dirty. So I'm just going to put this off to the side. And then I'm going to take the barrel and put it off to the side. And I've got to take the parts and just lay them all out. So I'm going to do that and be right back. There are some of the parts after cleaning. Um, the cleaning went really well. Um, I didn't bother, like like I told you before, I think I failed miserably because I was screwing this the wrong way, which is not good. So I left it in there, um, and I don't think there's any purpose of me taking this out now, now that I've screwed it down. So all I do is screw it down and screw it back in again, so it makes no sense at all. And I don't believe that the, the, the gear or the spinning mechanism in the bottom needs to be oiled at all. So it's probably good the way it is, so I'm just going to set these parts aside. The main plate here, I do need to go underneath the um, this here and then unscrew this, take off this cap jewel and then oil under there. So I've got to do that, got to do that. Um, and that's the only one. Uh, I checked all of these jewel settings. I wonder if I can go up close here. I checked all of these jewel settings and they're in amazing condition. Um, this setting on the top looks like it's got issues, but it doesn't. It's just some uh, film that's on the top of that, maybe from the cleaning. Um, including that this setting right here. But I looked under the microscope with each one of these settings and things of beauty. So I don't need to do anything with these, which is great. And I looked at the settings. I keep saying settings, but I'm looking at the jewels within the settings of these as well. And they're all perfect. The jewel holes are in immaculate condition. If you look down there, just easy. So there we go. Easy so to be you know, this old and still be in immaculate condition, 
it's just like me it's amazing and then these uh, I try to keep all the soft and the delicate parts together but these were the screws that were that were part of this and and it's like uh, they're all the same size so I'm not too worried about mixing and matching now and these are the screws that were used to put the two plates on um, and they also went through the ultrasonic cleaner as I believe I showed you uh, I'm not sure whether I showed you how to stack it but I stacked the ultrasonic cleaner nicely and these parts here all went through the ultrasonic cleaner as well including the this which is the balance bridge for the um, the balance bridge for the uh, pallet fork and I gotta make sure I'm grouping the parts so as I move this out these out I group them with with the parts I'll just go back a bit here so you can see uh, what do we got here there we go so I'm taking the parts out and just grouping them right like that um, and I can reuse for some reason I can't remember the name of this thing right these things are called you get a prize if you can remember what they're called I'll remember it as I'm talking but if you just you it a bit like squeeze it in a bit so it's kind of it's kind of you a bit and when you put it down you put put it down like this onto the uh, the hour wheel so I'll just throw it down on the hour wheel right now and then there's the stem I gotta look at my uh, pictures to make sure I put the stem in properly but there's only really one way that it works so there's no problem there um, there's the wheel that goes on top of the mainspring so I'll put that back together you grab that and there is the cannon pinion I'll put the cannon pinion over by the hour wheel and then I've got the minute wheel sitting here and I'll put that down here by the hour wheel and then as I go around the block here I've got uh, the settings so what I like to do here is these are the screws to put the movement in the case I usually put those in here so I don't lose them um, and then as I take the wheels out individually I'm grabbing the arms so I don't foul anything and I'll put those way out of the way as I've learned over the years watch parts stick to arms and go on floors and then you can't find them and that's not good it's a pain in the Badinsky trying to find a watch part that's sitting on the floor I've got carpeted floors what a dummy anybody who does watch work shouldn't have carpeted floors but I do now have this super rare earth magnet that could probably pick up my car. Uh, there's the screw there for the wheel that goes over the mainspring. Um, and there's, very careful here, there's the seconds hand, like that. And there's the pallet fork. I just still have to do a little bit of cleaning on the pallet fork as well. So make sure that's in mint condition and oil it properly. So there we go. So all the parts are now out and we're ready for reassembly again I'm going to use my Myers number 58 Myers number 58 movement holder and this thing is a thing of beauty um, I'm not sure if there was a Myers number 57 movement holder what do you think probably not so this is the number 58 movement holder which I adore this is the world's best movement holder just quickly you press the button on the side here like that and it releases it to size it and then you put in the various these things here which are d depending on what size watch you're working on and there's a boatload of these within the uh, case so you got all different size of those attachments for different size watches um, and then as you squeeze the movement in like this you turn this to tighten it but it's it's also sprung like that so when you tighten it it doesn't put any additional pressure what I really like about this is these little hooks here right there they grab onto the plate nicely and so you don't have to be concerned with this thing uh, getting out of position all right this is like I said earlier you want to be able to undo these capsules in order to get access to the um, to the jewel and then put a little bit of oil on there so I'm doing the left and right on this and I got I'm gonna put a little witness mark on here to make sure I've got the witness mark lined up there we go that's just a little tiny witness mark to make sure when I put that jewel back in it's lined up properly 
I'm hoping I can pull this jewel out with my screwdrivers and not have to punch it out from the other side because that's a bit of a pain in the butt. So, but it's doable. It's doable. And I do line the screws up on the mat so I can do kind of a left and right on the screws. Now, this is the, with any luck, I can move this up and not have to worry about the jewel in the center because I don't want to have to re-punch that in. So it just depends on how how hard this setting is in. And I have a problem here because I don't see it coming out nicely. So the uh, the alternative, of course, is to punch it out from the other side. Let me have a look here. Let me have a look. Yeah, that's in nice and tight. So, uh, look at how flat that is. It's rising up a bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to end up punching that out from the other side and then oiling it. Oiling it. Oiling it. You see how much movement there is in this thing. There we go. So I just take a piece of pegwood and then take that out from the other side and this thing has a little lip on it and then there's the cap. You turn that around so it doesn't get dirty. So that goes in like that. And I'm just going to put this on the mat nice and easy. And then look at this. Oh geez, you know what? It's clean as heck, eh? So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of oil on there. And that'll oil it properly. Um, now I could turn that in, turn that around and put that back in, which I think I'm going to do here um, before I apply the oil. So I'm going to do this, turn this around, place the jewel back in the setting here. Let me see, which way does that go? Looks like it goes like this. Like that. And then I can use my my pegwood to push this down again. And when you push it down there's a lip there and you gotta make sure that that jewel is touching that lip. Now to properly apply the um, properly apply the oil you just have to touch it like this and this is on the cap jewel for the for this and it's important that 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 cap jewel gets oiled um, now when I turn this around this is the tricky part I want to make sure that the The witness mark is on the right side, so I'm going to look at this and then look for that witness mark I put in there. And there it is there. So you rotate the movement until the witness mark is lined up. Is that the right witness mark, I ask myself? Uh, I think it is. Hard to say. Might be the other one. And right here, I think. And there we go. So that is the witness mark lined up. Now I have to just drop this in carefully and then use my pegwood to push that down. I heard that snap in place, so that should be good. That's oiled, um, and then you put the screws back very carefully to get these right position here, like that. And good news, I'd had two coffees today, but I'm not really shaking that much, which is excellent. There we go. 
that's one screw and you don't have to tighten those a lot because if you do there's a chance that you can strip it because these are stainless steel these are steel screws and the plate here I believe is not it's softer metal than than the screws are so it's just that's just a fact so I'm not gonna after this I'm gonna do the I gotta do the balance as well um, just reverse that out a bit gee whiz I'm having a hard time here today folks there we go I think that's it yeah there we go it's me on camera there we go perfect so those are in as you can see just bring that up for a close-up and there you can see the two screws there and right beside those are the banking pins and they're just sitting up on the watch as you can see and it's nice and level so you got to make sure that that setting when you put it back in place is in fact level check it three times because if for some reason it's not level then the pivot that's going through there will be fouled and that's not a good thing so so there so that's that um, and I think I need to put together uh, I'm not sure whether I should put this part in first so we shall see I gotta think about it for a second all right so while I have the watch exposed exposed I'm going to do a little bit of oiling I'm gonna put a bit of oil on the hole where the barrel rides and you just need to put it on one side because that the arbor for the barrel will come across and then and go in there nicely so there's not a problem then I'm going to put a bit of oil on the inside of where the center wheel rides and just put it on the side like that and that'll be good and I want to I think that's pretty good for my oiling for now that's for now um, I have a Bergeron, Bergeron, I got a lot of Bergeron stuff, eh? I have a Bergeron oiling holder, see there we go, there's the Bergeron oiling holder, which is really good, and I do have a Bergeron oil cups, right, so let me grab my Bergeron oil cups, because I think I want to use these for the remainder, there we go, and you open those up, and the various types of oil are in those cups. That's the yellow stuff, and then finally the uh, greasy stuff at the end. That stuff there, that's just barrel grease. So that's barrel grease I would use for a f an automatic movement. So so there ye go. That's my Bergeron. This is also Bergeron. See, Bergeron. I managed to snag that from somebody. It's a uh, high quality. High quality. So I think, I think I'm going to put the... A little bit of this watch together before I deal with the pallet fork and stuff so I could put the pallet fork in first while everything is out of the way because it's probably easier to do it but I need to address the pallet fork I need to to uh, make sure I've cleaned that pallet fork nicely so and there it is there I also want to look at it really close to make sure there's nothing fouling it or anything right so what I want to do is throw this pallet fork into a little tiny bit of lighter fluid. I think that's what I'm going to do. So we'll see what happens. Let me just do that. I'll go away and come back. All right, the pallet fork is now cleaned. So now I want to put in some 9415. This is Mobius 9415. And this stuff here it costs a fortune, but what it does is it stays on the pallet fork so it basically stays in position um, and I'm able to very carefully just poke this into my shtickensy shtick shtick I'm able to very carefully apply um, apply this oil to the pallet fork but before I do that I'm going to put the pallet fork and the bridge in place that way I know it's secure 
All right, I'm going to now put the pellet fork in where it belongs and then put the bridge on. So put that pellet fork in like that. Make sure the end of the pellet fork is is um, the pellet fork pivots are in the hole so when I put the bridge on um, I have no issues. The bridge just should go right should go straight down um, where it belongs. And be very careful when I do this. And what I do is I, I can hike this pallet fork up just a bit in the back and hold this in place. And this is tricky because when you're doing this, there's a lot of, basically there's, this can move a lot, so. There we go. So I think the pivot is now through the hole here, which is a good thing. Now I take the two screws that hold the pallet fork down and I tighten those up really loosely. It's funny, it's a double negative thing here happening or something. I tighten them loosely. Does that make any sense? So hopefully you can see what's going on here. I'm going to move my camera in because the cam camera angle is shitty as hell. So let me just move that in so you can see what I'm up to. And I may hit the camera when I'm doing this, I'm not sure, but the other angle was really bad. I put a little bit of pressure on the bridge, and this ensures that the bridge stays down and doesn't pop up when I'm trying to put the screws in. And again, do the next one. And what I'll do is when I look at the bridge, I make sure that it's flat against the um, the main, the uh, the plate. There, now just check that. Just check the edges right in here and here to make sure it's flat against the plate. Check the movement of the pellet fork. That seems very free. And then the pivots are through here. So, And if you really want to be anal retentive about this, right, you can remove the movement for a second. right? Check the other side to make sure you're seeing a pivot on the end there. And there it is. So you can see the pivot. You can see the pivot sticking through right there. And that just ensures that you don't have the pivot um, not sticking through so when you screw this down it bends the pallet fork pivots so tighten that up a little bit and then attack it from the top so I think it's screwed in there nicely now so I can just tighten that down and remember it's just hand it's snug there we go you get the feel for how to do this properly and then again I want to tight I want to test the pallet fork to make sure it's going back and forth nicely and it is there's no issue there at all it's nice and free and then while I have this open first I'm going to thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of oil on top I mean there is a cup there like that not too much and I put that in there and then because I don't want too much oil in there because it'll drip it'll drip down through that hole and it might ride down I'm going to take some radico and just poke it ever so slightly to get rid of any excess oil in there this is all really important okay I wouldn't be saying it if it wasn't important so the next thing is to oil the pallet the stones 
All right, again, I've got this oil, Mobius 9415. I gotta do a better angle on my camera. I'll be right back. There, now the camera's out, out of the way a little bit, but I can't really access my parts. <laughs> no matter what I do, I'm screwed. So there we go, that's the Mobius. So I gotta take my, my, um, my oil, whatchamacallum, thingy jobby doohickeys. I have to say that for, for Ed, if he's listening. And I wanna take a little tiny bit of this this Mobius oil and I want to place that I can do that showing you here on the face of the the pallet fork so the stones that stop and release the escapement so I'm going to do the other one now. There doesn't have to be a lot of this oil on there, just a little tiny bit. And that you would not believe the difference in performance. With and without. So i got to stab this because I don't like the way the oil went on there. So I'm going to stab it, grab a bit of oil here and then try again. All right, that's good. All right, so that went on nicely. And then just clean your, your oiler like that, stab it into that stuff that, again, it's like balsa wood. So I'm just going to put my orders away and put my my uh, 90, 90, 90, 94, 15, Mobius 9415 oil away. This stuff here. This is amazing. This stuff. Uh, amazing. So get it out of the way. And there. So I've got that pallet fork in there nicely. So, so now I can actually, I can put the wheels in, but I don't want to until I actually put the, uh, the setting mechanisms in. So I'm going to just uh, adjust things and get ready to do that. There we go. So this super close-up is causing me all kinds of fun with getting access to my parts and stuff. So again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is where the setting mechanism goes in. I'm going to put a bit of oil right in here and that, uh, And again, it'll it'll travel around, so I'm not too concerned about it. And I'm going to put a bit of oil as well right here, and on the back of this, wherever there's friction and there's a lot of friction, you just have to make sure it's oiled properly, so you don't end up with a problem. So, because friction is Friction is sometimes not your friend. Friction is not your friend. My God, my advice is amazing, isn't it? I'm a telling you. I'm a want to say. Somebody said I got like a golf voice or whatever. It's a very calming voice on how to put together a pocket watch. Mr. Anderson, I believe. And I'm going to get these parts out now that are nicely scrub-a-dub-dubbed and put the stems and stemming uh, stem winding mechanisms of, together again and figure out i gotta look at a picture to make sure i've got this stuff coming in, in you know being assembled the right way so being the self-proclaimed oil king i'm going to put a little tiny bit of oil on this here and this just feeds in into the mechanism. So first thing I'm going to do, put a little bit of oil on there, and I should. I'm going to use the red stuff. So I'm just going to just, maybe later on I'll tell you the difference between the red stuff and the other stuff. And this is just lot allows this to slide around nicely. So you just need a dab on there, and just roll that over and put another dab on there. And it shouldn't really touch the mat. 
And there we go. That's all dabbed. Little dab will do ya. A little dab will do ya. And for you people that are super old out there, that's burl cream. Oh yeah, the old burl cream ad. A little dab will do ya. I'm not super old yet, but I'm getting there. Anyway, so I need to put this on. I should tell you the names of these things, right? If I was a good boy, I'd do that. Alright, I was a good boy and I looked it up. So, anyway, it's called the Keyless Works. So the uh, part that goes all these stems and stuff, the uh, winding mechanism is the Keyless Works. So you've got the stem. So this would be the stem here. And then beside the stem, you have... What you have is the underside of the crown wheel. So this attaches to the crown wheel, this part here. Um, and then this is the clutch. So this here is the clutch. Let's see if I can move that over. That's the clutch. So, so that's all you need to know. So the other stuff is I'd have to do more research and I don't have time, so too bad. You can look it up on your own, in your spare time, while you're trying to figure out how the heck to put a pocket watch together, right? Um, anyway, this goes in, this part drops right in here. Now the problem is when you drop that in, it's just gonna go right through. So sometimes what I do, see if I can do it this time, is I take a piece of Rodico and I stick that piece of Rodico on the bottom and the Rodico is soft, so it'll keep the wheel in place. So, and I think that this goes in on this part of the, uh, this part of that shaft of the um, setting of the stem. So, let me have a look here how that works. Yeah, that's on that part of the staff of the stem. So this would go on like this, right? So if I have the... Um, stem like this i'm going to put a little oil on there first so this is, you're watching me normally i would just shut up and do it but i have to talk to you while i'm doing this so i'm going to put a little bit of oil that thing just took a walk just put a little oil right there and that'll just transfer all around so and that's a light oil that's the red stuff again right not the red stuff and i may need two two tweezers to do this so i get the one tweezer holding this and I believe this then goes on like so, like that. But then the whole thing of Majabi doohickey fits into the watch like this. But I got to have this wheel on first because this attaches to this. So it's this, this, and another this on the side. So this goes on this way like so and this has a this has a the crown the ratchet wheel here this has got a it's square on the inside and then the whole shooting match goes into the watch like so now I'm not sure if I can just drop this in or let's see what happens here because I may have to pull this back and then push it back in so I think I may have to do that well that won't go back any further so I can't do that. Let me just have a quick look at it before I do this. That's how it goes in anyway. So let me just have a look and come back. Turns out all I had to do was make sure that this end part of the stem is lined up with this here. And then it pushed in easily. So there was no problem. But I'm looking at the mechanisms here. And this mechanism here needs to be inside this slot here. Or else it won't work. And I don't know if I can do that without... Uh, that moving things so I'm just going to again I need to fart around with this to make sure I can get it in that slot and I don't want to break that spring because that's the spring I told you earlier in another video that is, that's impossible to replace so I'm just going to see which way that spring actually moves because I might have to rise this up again like that get it into the hole and then move it around again. So I'm going to be I'm going to play with this for a short period of time to see if I can get that in the slot here. Uh, 
This is the tinkering with the uh, stems and stuff. This is the hardest part, I think, of pocket watch repair. I think in watches, it just goes in no problem, but pocket watches, they got personalities. So you don't want to force any parts. I don't want to have to unscrew this and take all this apart to do this. And I know I took it out, so I should be able to put it in. So I'm going to take this out completely. Let's see if I can show you where, where I'm at here with this. And I put the Rodico in below, and I've got this lever here and I want to make sure that this wheel, ratchet wheel, I think it's called, or the clutch wheel, is is inside of this spring. So and I know I know I can sure if I can move that spring out of the way. Because the spring seems to be over in the side. And if I push it, can I move it? That's the trick. Like if I take a, uh, even my oiler, can I move that with my oiler? Not sure. I'm going to make sure my oiler is clean because I don't want oil in there, but I might be able to move that spring with my oiler. Let me see if that's, if it's, if it's amenable for some movement here. And it doesn't seem to want to move, so doesn't seem to want to move. Anyway, I'm going to come back there. If I push one of the parts out of the way, push that back, this moved, and I'm not sure if it moved enough for me to put this in place. So let me see. And again, once I put this in place, I may have another issue of getting the other part of the watch movement in, right? This part here needs to go in there, and then this needs to fall into the slot, which could cause other problems here. No, it didn't. So there you go. That moved in place, which is good. And now, if I use my my bench key and I move that, is it going to do what it's supposed to do? There we look at that. So it does do it, which is nice. So I'm going to do two things right now. I'm going to oil the plunger part. So I have it nicely oiled. I've got too many oilers out here, folks. And my close-up, like I said, is causing me all kinds of fun to try to... to um, let me see. You're going to oil the, oil the plunger part. And I'm going to use a little bit of this oil here. So I press down with my bench key. You're getting like a play-by-play -play here, and I don't want to screw this up, so push down like that and put a little bit of oil right there. That's perfect. And then this is going to be rotating, so I'm going to put a bit of oil here, and that'll carry it all around. So These here catch, so I'm not sure if I want to oil those. So that's good, and this pushes in nicely, and I've got a good action on the spring here. And I'm going to put a little tiny bit of oil on the inside of here too. Get some more oil here. Just make sure that the reducing the amount of friction that goes in there. So, And it looks like a little spot here to apply oil. There we go. Look at that. That is smooth as crap. That's good. That works well. And that slides into there, so I'm going to put a little oil right there. And that slides into the pocket right there with that screw. So there we go. Now, I don't want too much oil, so like I did last time, I'm going to grab the Rodico and just poke it where I think there's a little bit too much oil to take some of that oil out. So I can see that working with pocket watches um, there's a lot of work to do even when you're assembling it probably harder to, to assemble than to disassemble right so because you need to make sure you're oiling it in the right places so that's putting the um, that's putting the keyless mechanisms back together and I'll get that um, I got this device I made here um, for turning something I can't remember what I did to make that or why I made it, but 
It belongs in a hole somewhere in my watch plate stuff. So I'm trying to find the hole for it. No, that's good enough there. Anyway, so that's it. Clean my oilers up because now I'm going to start putting the gears and stuff like that in. So let me just readjust here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab that wonderful barrel I had. Make sure that that's in the square part of the barrel is in place. As you can see that square there. And just drop that down into place nice and easy. And if you recall, I oiled that earlier. So that's there like that. And now what I always do with my phone is I have a quick look at it's funny with the phone, the ID here. A quick look at what which which gear goes in first. So I just take a look like that, took a picture. That way I'm not guessing at which gears fall in first. So the first thing I need to put in is the escapement. And I look at which way that escapement goes. And everything is that way, so I can drop the escapement in that now. And I gotta get up close a bit. And I oil it from the other side later, so. I say so a lot. As, as I've said before, I think, making my videos. That escapement's not going to go in like that. And you guys are watching me, so I want to make sure I got a good grip on this. I got to go under the plate a bit and then put it in. make sure it's not jammed anywhere like it is right now there we go that's better and it's in there and up and down which is perfect so that's the escapement so that would be the, um, I guess the fifth wheel, if you count it that way. That's the fourth wheel goes in like this because you have the second hand going on that. So just drop that through like this. There's the second hand. And then I've got the, um, I call it the intermediate wheel. So it would be the third wheel. And that goes right on top. Um, so I can grab that by one of the arms ever so carefully and then drop that in here. Like so. I know it's boring. All right, keep going here. Now I want to put in the center wheel and that would drop in my pearl cleaning machine does a great job by the way and then there's a company that contacted me to say would you sponsor would you would you do a review of the machine and and, and we'll give you stuff i thought well sounds all good but i don't want to be one of these guys who does watch repair shows everybody how to do stuff and tell you that i'm being paid for it so that is not the plan. That was never the idea here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop this bridge in right here on top. So I got everything snug down. So this is uh, got to make sure I put this down perfectly. So this this wheel here would be this would be the the the. Let's see if I can remember the name of this thing. So it'd be the uh, I think it's called the, just slowly, <laughs> I'm stalling, that would be the ratchet wheel. So this is the ratchet wheel on the top, and then the other wheel here that goes on top of the mainspring uh, is, no, the ratchet wheel goes on top of the mainspring. I got crappy diagrams here for explaining, I need to get my manual out. Like, I got a million manuals, so why am I not grabbing the million manuals? I'm giving you bad data. Just look it up. I'm telling you, look it up. I'm trying to find a breakdown of a watch here, just so I can get it right. There we go. So I got it right now. So that 
that wheel that I just mentioned is called it is the I know I'm driving you nuts here right so this is the yeah the crown wheel so that's the crown wheel and the ratchet was on the inside here so are the clutch the crown wheel clutch here um, this is the crown wheel so and then on top is the ratchet wheel on top of the uh, on top of the mainspring so I got a someone said you should rem you should memorize your parts I'm like yeah I don't think so <laughs> I really should, but I'm a bad boy. So I can put this on like this just to make sure that I just have to make sure that the uh, the ratchet, the crown wheel is actually on top of where the stem is. So I just drop that down like that. And that should fall into place nicely. So there we go. So that fell into place, but is it, is it, yeah, there we go. So that's in nicely. And I just have to find my three screws. So, do you remember that TV show called My Three Sons? Uh, with, what was that guy's name that kept wearing that giant coat? Um, I don't remember his name. Like, I was a kid when I watched that stuff, so I'm not, it's not, I'm not that old. So when you screw these in, screw it in lightly, okay? Don't, don't half down on it, because these screws, um, you don't want to break anything again, so you, won't, you don't want to squish stuff. I always look on the edge of the pocket watch movement here to see if it's actually down and flush with the plate. Because if it's flush with the plate, then I should be good. I'm not going to cause any undue harm on the movement. So it's plate flush. So I just, but I just lightly hold down the plate here. And as you can see with my glove, I'm being a good boy today. Uh, there that's good there and then grab one more screw here and put that in here right come on you can do it you can do it you can do it and there we go that's going in nice and easy and I'm just gonna tighten it just a bit so I've got some it's down nicely and it's tightened just a bit not a lot just a bit and then I'm going to get the uh, the bench key out again and have a look at what kind of action I have here. There we go. That wheel is turning nicely. Like that. And then I go back like this. Um, and it's disengaged. I think that's good, isn't it? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's disengaged because it's turning the wheel on the other side of the movement. That's a, what's a happening. And I can grab that Rodico from the bottom now. It actually fell down once I had all the movement stuff in there. Look at the movement again really nicely to make sure everything is flat in there. And you're not going to squish anything. And then once you're satisfied that you've got, uh, that the plate is down well, then you can tighten it. But not before. not before there we go so that's good there now what I want to do is put on the um, ratchet wheel on top of the mainspring so put that on it's easy you've got the wheel here and you just have to move the click spring out of the way so you've got a click spring here line up the square part on the top here so you don't have to fart with that later and then you've got a click spring here that you should just be able to pull out of the way like I just did and then I've got a screw on here and again you screw this on snug but not super tight because you can strip the head off of these screws really easily and then you'll be super pissed off that you did that like that and I can just hold that down while I'm tightening it because it will I'm just making sure that there's some movement there yeah it's moving because that is actually attached to the barrel underneath and it wants to be snug in with the barrel so there's no issues so there's it's nice and snug in there but not too snug but just perfect now level of snugness and now I can put this plate on here which goes on everything and make sure 
that it, everything, all the pivots are through there, so I don't have a big problem, right? So, so I'm not going to wind the watch up until I've done this. So here we go. We got this hole here, then lines up with the center wheel, and the rest of it is good to go. So, so I just drop this down. With any luck, everything is going to line up perfectly. I doubt that'll happen, but as you can see, um, I'll just put that down. And it should find should find home with some of this. There we go. That's good. That's good. That's good. You know what? I think everything dropped down perfectly. Oh my God! And the plate is actually parallel, so I didn't have to tweak anything. That was a perfect drop. Now what I want to do is make sure I put those screws in fast, so I don't hit something to make it jump out because that's what I do so just screw that down nice and like quickly and again I'm not tightening these I'm just basically screwing them in but not tightening them because I don't want to tighten anything down until I know that all of the parts and the pivots are in the right holes and everything so I and I can test that in a second once I get this screwed down a bit. And I'll give that, eh, don't let your screwdriver slip because you'll scratch the plate. The problem with this is that I'm on camera again, which makes it a bit harder to do this work. So those are not tight. So if I had a pivot that was out of place, I wouldn't have an issue. So if two of them are in, which means everything should be in well. Um, and I gotta still have to oil the cups on top here to make sure they're well oiled. So I'll just put that in and so I'm not tightening that yet. And the reason for it is I'm going to touch the center wheel here just a bit and see if I got movement through the wheels, the wheel train. So it's called a wheel train. And I do look like I got movement right to the pallet fork, which is nice. Um, and also, then now what I'm going to do is take this movement out, and I'm going to look to see that the that all of the pivots are showing here. And that's there. That's there. That's there. That's there. Be very cautious of this because that's your second your second hand pivot, and you don't want to break that because. There's a gentleman who got a hold of me uh, uh, a couple of days ago who wants me to fix, to re-pivot his fourth wheel, right? So again, I'm checking to make sure all those are sticking out, right? He wants me to re-pivot his fourth wheel because he tried to straighten it and the pivot broke off, right? So that must have pissed him off, like, exceptionally, because that would be... That would be very upsetting because now you got to redo it. Now I actually put a hat on a, a hat. I basically built a hat. I'm tightening all this stuff down. So now the next test, I built a hat and put it on top of the shaft of the fourth wheel, and then I made a pivot on the end of that hat. So, which was an interesting way of dealing with it. So now I'm winding this up a bit and. Hopefully the mainspring main spring holds nicely because that's a test of that. Now what you do is you tap the pallet, the, uh, pallet fork and yes it, it works. It's snapping from side to side so I'm going to give you a close up of that and I'll have a look at how that works. So there we go. You saw I put a little bit of pressure on the um, on the mainspring, and now when I just touch this pallet fork, you see that snap over? There, that's snapping back and forth nicely. That means that everything is kind of working. So it's the whole watch movement is now waiting to accept the uh, the balance. So I got to do a little bit of work on that balance right now. Actually, before I do the work on the balance, I think I want to put the cannon pinion back in. Now that I've got this in place, I can lay that, I should be able to lay the whole thing flat on my mat. 
when I put the cannon pinion back in because I want the pressure to be you know equally pressing down on all the back parts so and I want to make sure that 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 fourth wheel pivot is safe so so to put the cannon pinion back in there's a couple of ways of doing it right um, if it's loose enough you can just merely put it like this and then slide it in I like to actually put in the fourth wheel or sorry the minute wheel first right like that uh, and then I like to take the cannon pinion sometimes the minute wheel falls out again once I put it upside down and the cannon pinion needs to be pushed straight down right so what I like what I do normally if you do it I see people do it with their tweezers they'll take the edge and they'll push it in place that's all doable so I can line up line up the uh, the gears here nicely and then just push that straight down Let's see if I can see if I do that and I'm a good boy here so that There we go. So that worked without a problem. So that is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is you go in your staking set and you pick up a stake, if this is a nasty cannon pinion, and you actually use this, the, the stake to push down the cannon pinion. So it goes perfectly down like that. So no issue at all. Now I could put the face on right now um, and then turn it around and then install the... Uh, install the balance uh, I'm not sure whether I want to do that let me think yeah I could do that because um, I can put the balance on let me think do I want to do that mm, do, 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 do. I need some suggestions from people out there because if I do that turn it around put the face on I want to make sure there's no pressure on that face um, and I won't, don't want to install the whole movement in until I got the balance in so if I put the balance in I can still do this and install the face and keep my fingers away so let's just do the balance part first and you got to watch this because that that minute hand might just pop out there we go it just decides to fall out so so I'll put that minute hand back after back after now again when you're moving parts around on your mat you just make sure they're out of the way because I I didn't do this but I could have put this down on the minute hand right and that would have been a nasty day right so make sure your parts are out out of the way so I'm just going to set this up in a way that when I put the uh, the balance back in um, it'll receive the balance and I don't have any issues so I'll put that in and snug it up and now I got to go do some balance work so I'm going to put the balance in my in my uh, balance cleaning dipper device the dunker tank and clean that balance up and then oil the pivot on the top and get it all ready so I'll be right back all right this is my famous dunker tank that I designed and what I have here is a couple of coins I'm using and when I do this it raises the dunker tank up and this is the dunker so I basically um, fashion this bolt got rid of all the threading on the inside of it right just move this over just a bit and that allows me to now take some lighter fluid you'll love this guys you'll just love this what I didn't want to do is is I wanted to be able to clean the hairspring without having to disassemble almost everything right because I could disassemble the hairspring and do all of that but really what I want to do is make sure that hairspring is absolutely clean right so I have no issues so so if I put some lighter fluid in here into the uh, the dunker tank dunking part like that and then I basically take the um, the watch balance here the balance cock lift that up carefully like that and then I put that on to this is the hard part lining things up I put it on like that and as you can see the balance is now floating in here right so now I can rise raise this up right with my with the two coins coins I'm gonna end up going to jail for drilling a hole in a coin 
and get that out of the way. And so now, just make sure that the dunker doesn't r raise the balance up. So we've got that in place like that. There we go. That's much better. And so now, as I raise this up, the hairspring is actually actually inside of the um, it's inside there and it's floating in uh, it's floating in lighter fluid and you leave that there for a while it's going to get rid of all the crud in in the um, on the hairspring so what I also do is I take a blower and I stuff stuff it inside I make sure it's positive pressure and I just agitate I don't have to stuff it in. I just agitate the liquid, but I'm going to move this over because I don't want my mat to get all kinds of crap in it. So I'm just going to do that and I'll be right back. There, now I've done it. And the beautiful thing about lighter fluid is it just evaporates. So if I squirt the side of this, any leftover lighter fluid that's in there will absolutely evaporate and it evaporates quite quickly so now i don't have to get rid of all of the evaporated lighter or the all the lighter fluid right now but i'm going to get rid of a bit of it because now i just want to lower i want to lower the um, the dunker tank and while i'm lowering it i want to make sure that because there's liquid on there that it doesn't stretch the hairspring so I lower it by going the opposite direction like that and I want to get it once I get it lower than the actual balance cock I can tuck it underneath which will level the spring off nicely I just get that down there am I turning it the wrong way I don't know no that, one of them could, could lower faster than the other one you need your technique to be absolutely infallible there we go you see the way I'm doing that so they're threaded exactly the same so now that balance is spanky clean which is really nice I've done this before in the, in the um, and it's amazing how how clean it it makes it the other thing too that it does is it um, it doesn't affect the impulse fuel because the lighter fluid doesn't affect the shellac. So it's shellac free. So there's no impact to that. So there you go. So now it's just dangling there. And I can remove the lighter fluid. I can basically take this out of there and then lift the uh, this up and then I can use let's see if I can do this very carefully and just move the dunker tank the dunker part out of the way make sure it doesn't hit any pivots and then this can dangle there and then I usually throw that into the snow if it's the winter time so but today I'm just going to move it over to the side first try not to knock that over don't smoke any cigarettes while you're doing this and now what I can do is hold the balance a bit like that and then I just apply some air to the uh, to the movement here, and that'll just dry that off nicely. So, so I can just let that hang for a while, or puff it, or dry it. But usually, I'll leave that for a while because I I still have to take the the uh, screws off the top and put some oil on the um, on the upper uh, jewel cap so I likely won't do that on camera because it's such detailed work I, it freaks me out when I'm doing it so but here I'm just drying off the hairspring I may go for lunch and then come back and I'll know it's completely dry by the time I come back right there won't be any nonsense right but what I want to do first is move it over to here so there's no stress on the hairspring like I said before so just wheel that up a bit like that and then take this off get a good grip on the uh, balance cock so it doesn't go anywhere place this in here like so mm -hmm. trying to find the hole again there it is
There we go. I'm just making sure everything is lined up. That's good there. Now I can blow the crap out of the out of the uh, dunker tank. I don't think there's any more nothing left here. No, it's all good. I put little sticky things in the bottom too. So this plate is loose like that, and then it just goes on top like this. And then, and then the tank goes on. And this is I basically drilled the holes. I basically th I threaded this. I threaded these. I threaded these. It's uh, it was a bit of a job, but man, this thing just takes a ton of work out of cleaning the uh, balance. So, and I usually leave that in situ while I unscrew this to pop out the jewel. So. Anyway, I'll be back. I'm going to go have lunch. I also put a cover over the top of this to make sure that dust doesn't get on it while I'm having lunch. All right, everything's cleaned up. I had my lunch. And I'm ready to install this balance and see if I get the tickety tick tick. So as I do this, um, the pallet fork is on the right side, the correct side to accept the balance. So I put it in this way. And uh, do, this is where I do a lot of praying. And I want to enter it this way, like that. And then be very careful as I put it in. Um, I'm going to make sure that the balance, it actually gets into the... Uh, there we go. Hang on. And I always put my hand on the side here because I'm never sure whether it's going to fall in place or not. Right? Come on. Get in there. Come on. All right, so I got action. Now, as you saw before, there's the screw. I've got it on this piece of Rodico. And when I put this on, then I'm gonna hold this down just a little bit so it doesn't jump around. And again, you got to make sure that the balance is in place without any problems. So in this case here, I'm going to... It looks like it's running nicely, actually. I just press down here a bit. And I'm going to check it for magnetism as well, because it's a very old watch and it might be magnetic. So it may have some magnetism. All right, so that's not tightened yet, but it's tightened a little bit. Make sure the plates are good. It's ticking nicely. And then I'm going to tighten this down a bit and do a little bit of praying here. Okay, here we go. There, tightened. Now I am going to take a quick slow motion video just to see what kind of amplitude I'm getting here. It'll get better as this thing works itself in too. So just take your iPhone, do slow motion for three seconds, and then play it back and see what kind of amplitude you get. Yeah, that's not bad. It's about 360 degrees. So that's just just under, no, that's 360. Let me try that again here. Just make sure I got a good view of it here to just show you. Just follow one arm around. Yeah, 360. So 360 degree amplitude with just a bit of a wind on the mainspring is not too bad for a billion year old watch. So what I'm going to do now is case the bugger. So I've got to put the, um, I've got to turn that around. Um, and I've got to put, just turn that like this. Yeah, that'll work itself in, like I said. And the amplitude should improve. And so I'll just place it down like this. And you got to watch out for that second hand, that, that pivot sticking out, because you do not want to hurt that pivot sticking out. Let me just... And it's working nicely, even upside down, which is always sometimes an issue. And there's the pivot there. So, so now I'll very carefully put the, um, the minute hand in. Yep, 
You know, it's much easier for me to do watch work on my own watches because then I'm not worried about customer satisfaction. There we go. Drop that down, and then I've got this to put in. And I already have the uh, whatever that thing is called. For some reason, I can't remember, and I got a bunch of them in a box. So that's that. And now I've got to loosen the screws for the face. There's one. I need to put my glove back on. I forgot my glove. But I only touched the side there, so it's not too bad. Putting the glove back on here. Um, so that's one. Let me just grab this again. I don't want to foul anything. That's already not in the way. Where's the balance? Stay away from the balance. There's another one. Move that around. I think I did this one already. Yep. And then the last one should be, there's three usually, so I can just get the last one here. It's next to next to where the crown is, or the stem, right there. So that's good there. Now before I reassemble everything, I just want to make sure that the uh, the actual mechanism still work. Let me just zoom in here to show you. Let's do that right there. It's a, kind of a manual zoom in. Look here. I just want to make sure that everything turns so the time will turn, right? So, yeah, that's good. That works. No problem. I already wound it, so I'm not too concerned with that. I'm going to grab the face here. And I should be able to put the face straight down. And again, watching out for that second. So the 12 o'clock will line right up with the, uh, with the stem. So I'm going to drop that down, straight down. And it should fall in place. There we go. So that's in place. And now I can tighten these screws. I can just tighten them while it's laying down here, maybe. Just get one in nicely. Alright, that's good there. Where's that? I still have to put the... I still have to put the dust cover on. I'm being really careful because I'm right next to the balance right now and I don't want to foul that. So that's two and there's another one here. That's three. So that's three. And now I've got the dust cover that I need to install. Uh, this is the dust cover here and that goes on with the lip thing, lip thing, on the bottom. So I may just be able to press this on. We look where the balance is again. It's there, so I think I got everything screwed in nice and tight. Let me just look at this one here to make sure this is any good. Yeah, that's good enough. And there is the um, shield the shield now theoretically if I just push down on this it should snap into place but I may have to move some stuff out of the way a bit to get it in it's never easy all right I'm gonna go away because I'm gonna use my fingernails on the edge to get that in all right that was easy I just took my fingernails and I just pushed down on the edge to make sure it snaps in over everything so that's good there. So it's it's in. It's ticking away nicely still. And I'll just I'm gonna throw a magnet on top just to see if it's magnetized. Just hang on a second, or a compass rather, not a magnet. And see if it just rattles a bit. So you just put the compass down like that. 
and look at that <laughs> that's oh i always get a kick out of that because that's like severely magnetized um and that's from being basically never demagnetized probably so i'm going to get my demagnetizer out and then see if i can cure that all right i'm going to show you how this works hopefully not screw it up so i got the demagnetizer there so i want to hold the watch movement sideways so i want it to be kind of want it to be like this and then i want to put it into the demagnetizer and then pull it out again so so we're just going to put it sort of halfway in and then pull it straight out and then it's going to go about three feet away so let's just do this here i don't like doing it because it just scares me two three seconds and then move it away slowly that should align all the magnetic particles my friends so now i should be able to put that down and when i put this compass on is it still magnetized let me check here nope it's pretty good it's got a little tiny bit of a shake but not much so i wouldn't worry about that you saw it before it was crazy crazily magnetized it's not got anything left in it so let me just do another slow-mo video on this thing to make sure i'm getting a decent amplitude still all right it might be better when it's demagnetized or yeah still getting 365 but no magnet no magnetism which is great um and like i said when i wind this up more it'll it'll be better but i don't want to i don't want to stress it it's a very old watch so so here's the case and i can case this well like i did before i cased it with the stem out but i can put it put the stem back and try to case it right so and i know that the stem is a bit better working a bit better now so it actually will snap back it should snap back there we go it's still not easy to snap it back but but that's life that's what they say first day in august last day in may i like having it cased before i actually put the hands back on so let me get down here down and dirty and i'll case it and there it is there that's a good visual um so i put the case in what i do is look at the if you look at where the the uh, stem enters make sure it's clear of everything which it is and then make sure that the stem is squared up right the square part of the stem let's show that to you here make sure the square part of the stem is actually squared up with the hole so just fart with it at an angle here and it should be squared up with the hole like that and then this goes in like this so it should just drop down and then be able to go in let's move that just a bit i think there's a if you can't get it right away back it off try again and then um it will slide in come on come on i may have to pick it up to case it which sometimes is the case so just put it like that and then it'll find its its way home come on come on get in the hole oh my god it's being a pain in the butt let me have a look here there we go so now it's in and i usually when i put the screws back i just zoom out here a bit I like to hold on to it when I put the screws back. Now I gotta find the screws. Where they put those? Oh yeah, they put them here. So I like to hold on to it so I it's saw it's firmly in the case so I don't have any issues there. And like I've said before, is that you angle angle the watch away. That way there's no chance of of the that screw falling into the balance, right? Which would ruin your day. So you did you do that. And just kind of it, it makes the screwdriver will sometimes sometimes slip when you do that but it's of no consequence if it slips a little bit so i do that and i angle it again and put that screw in place 
That's angled again. Get a better view of things. Things. I've got my hand in the way a bit, so I apologize. And just screw that down nicely. It's gonna be a long video, man. Hopefully you're you're good with that. Somebody said they bought some popcorn or something and watched the video. So now I've got it like this. I'm gonna just scrape some Rodico on the inside of this of this case just to make sure I don't have any leftovers in there, right? So and that's pretty clean. On the threads and then this was in the ultrasonic cleaner, so it's spanky clean, and I want to cover that right now. But before I do that, I'm going to oil the bugger. So I've almost forgot to oil it, but not so. So it should even work even better once I oil it. So I'm going to put the red oil in first. Not the red oil! That gives the center wheel some nice movement, and then I'm going to I may dab it after with my Rodico because if, you, know, you don't want to over oil it. That's absolutely for sure. Okay. That was the second wheel. So there's. That's the fourth wheel. And then I got the blue oil for the escapement. And that's the, uh, what is it? 90 something. So I'll show you the oils in two seconds. There's the other oil, so that's good. And then if I look at, um, I'll go grab the oils and show you what the oils are. Just hang on a second. All right, let's talk oils for two seconds here. So this is the uh, Mobius, this is the 9010. So that's the blue oil, and that's used around the uh, balance and the, uh, and, the, and the escapement, and no more than that. So that's a very fine blue oil. So synthetic oil, I call it the blue oil. Anyway, that's the thinnest oil, and that's uh, used in parts of the watch that has the least amount of friction. Um, I think my expiry dates are off, but this stuff is synthetic, so it's, it can last longer. There's the red oil, and that's the 9104 HP 1300 or 9104, and that's the red oil, and you're using that on wheels. The four third second uh, wheel, maybe, and then some parts I showed you uh, within the... Uh, the actual winding uh, mechanism, so the keyless works, I guess. And then I've got Microgliss D5, okay, and that is the yellow oil, I'll call it, and that's the stuff you would use uh, over with keyless mechanisms, and where I showed you uh, rubbing that oil on the plate where the stem goes in, places like that, so wherever there's high friction, you're going to use this oil as well. And then there's um, natural grease, so this, this oil is actually used uh, as a braking oil, and that's if you have a automatic movement. So it looks kind of like this, like that. So that you'd put that in the barrel wall and then use that as a natural grease in the barrel wall as a braking grease. And then the last oil I showed you was the one you use in a pallet fork, which is a four, the 9415. So those are the oils. All right, the other thing that didn't happen is I uh, put the hands on. It didn't seem to record uh, putting the hands back on, so I might have missed a bit of video there. But as I later explain, uh, I put the uh, hour hand on first, set it up to 12, put the second hand on, I push that in. I just I just sort of tip it on the edge, make sure that it's on the pivot, and then I press it down with the back of my tweezers lightly. And then I then once I've, I ensure that that's clearing the second hand, and then I put the minute hand on. And as you use your hand removers, you've got to make sure the hands are flat. So you go either left, right, up, or down to make sure that they're flat and there's enough real estate in there. I've got other videos on how to do that, um, but I forgot. It didn't record for some reason. All right, I want to make sure that the minute hand is clearing the crystal so there's no dragging issues there at all right so i, I gotta find the slot for the uh for this bezel to catch on to so like that no that's not it no i can put take my glove off now whenever you feel a little bit of pressure at all back off so you don't ruin the watch that's that's a good a good habit to get into so let me see is that no, that just feels, it feels good, but it feels like it's not going on right. 
just keep playing here. Some of these old watches, the threads have personality. And you don't want to strip the thread on it, so just take your time, put it in, try it out, back it off. See, it's too wide on this side, that's the problem. So, back it up. Doesn't, let's try another situation or position here. And try it again. There we go. Now you see that? Just play with it a bit until you've got it. Now I want to make sure there's no scraping here. That It's completely free and I believe there's no problems. And what time is it? 2.46 so I can just move that around to 2.46 and I'm hoping when I snap that in there's no problem, right? 245, 246, I'll make it 247, and then push this in, and it's pushed in, and it winds, that's a good thing. All right, I got it all together now, it seems to be running perfectly, no problems at all. It's a, it's a good, it's a great old watch, man, it's a great old watch. It's fully wound up, I wouldn't recommend the owner wind it up, like fully wind it up only because of the, uh, it's, a, it's an old watch and I'm not sure what that'll do to it, but it's running nicely. I'll have to time it to see how well it's doing, but it looked like it had a, at least a 300 degree uh, swing on it and it'll work itself in and be a little bit better. So, so there you go. Hey, this is JD again. Welcome back. So that was quite an adventure with this pocket watch, the assembly of it, the oiling, the everything. So the big thing here was I was able to find a Waltham a spring. I think the length of it might be a little long. I'm not sure. So I just recommend not winding it all all the way to the end because the length is, is uh, probably a little long. The strength was perfect and the width was right on the money. So it was absolutely perfect. So there's no issue there at all. Uh, trying to find that the actual, the length might have been right. I'm not sure. Okay. But it anyway, works fine. It fit in the barrel. It's usually one, one third of the barrel is the spring. So uh, this was, I think it was a little bit more than a third. It looked like a little more than a third, but just don't wind it up like totally, okay? Because it's an old watch. It's not going to be used a lot likely, but it now works. So it's uh, it's doing well. Um, and I'm looking at the time right now, and it's now 2.51, and I put it at 2.52. So, or I put it about 30 seconds ahead or whatever, and it's working really well. So the, the uh, mainspring was the one thing I was really worried about. I went on Cousins UK and couldn't find a mainspring. I went on Casker, couldn't find a mainspring. Went on Esslinger, couldn't find a mainspring. And then I looked at my own damn mainsprings, and guess what? I had a mainspring. It was amazing. <laughs> what, are the, what are the chances? And like I said before, the mainspring that was on there already, it was, uh, it was set. So it was, um, I don't know if I have it in front of me here somewhere, but it was a set mainspring, which means there's, there's basically wouldn't be supplying any power. That's what a set mainspring looks like. Um, and when you get a real mainspring, they're stretched out like this, and then the end actually goes the other way. So it actually coils the other way, kind of like an S. So that was a bit of a B arch to put back in, but it worked well. I got it in. Um, and you saw how we do the hands. So the trick there is to is to put the hour hand in first, line it up perfectly, then put the second hand in and make sure the hour hand rides over the second hand without fouling it. Because I've had watches where I put the hands in. Forgot to check sideways to make sure the hour hand was going over that second hand. And it fouled the, hour, it fouled the uh, watch and it stopped. I'm like, ah, why is this watch stopping? So, so I think we're good. Um, I'm going to let it run for a week. Um, see what happens. Uh, make sure I can still wind it. Make sure there's no issues there at all. Um, because when I first got it, there was a bit of grinding uh, uh, over that uh, the the actual crown wheel, and so then the crown wheel might be able to go down a little further. But but I left it the way it was. Um, and if I have to do anything, I would take the crown wheel off and see if I could lower it. Not sure if that's possible, but I think we're good. I wound it up. It's working perfectly. Um, but again, it's a very old watch, so I'm not expecting the owner to to run around with this in their pocket. Just buy um, one of these, and you can and you can keep keep time really well. So that's it. So that's that's my advice. Uh, what other advice? You saw the the magnet I was using here for uh, to check out the 
magnetism and when I put it on there man there was a lot of magnetism that was a uh, just like the old get smart movie the big magnet pulled and ship towards the island I think this watch could easily pull a ship towards the island okay it's a lot of magnetism in this watch so I got rid of that I uh, demagnetized it and I showed you how to do that as well um, and again when you're reassembling these watches make sure you stay away from that fourth wheel pivot the one that holds the second hand uh, like I said a gentleman contacted me from Vancouver and said hey any way you can repivot my uh, my uh, pocket watch that's a railroad grade high-end pocket watch because he said I tried to straighten that pivot and it snapped off you can't really straighten the pivot unless you anneal it which means you got to get a torch heat it up soften it up and then and then you got to then dip it and then or let it cool slowly and then you've got to do it again and then dip it to uh, to in oil preferably to let it uh, harden right so so you'd have to anneal it to bend it um, usually that is not successful so just when you take the watch apart there's no reason for that pivot to have been bent so make sure you uh, be very very careful around that second hand pivot I've had to deal with this before and make a new pivot and blah 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 right so so that's it that's that's the video I hope you enjoy it I think it's a long one I'm gonna shut up right now and allow you and upload it to allow you to uh, have a look at it thanks a lot you stay safe again if you want me to do work for you jdwatchservice at gmail.com um, I think I do okay I wore a glove the whole time so shout out to the guy who said hey you should be wearing a glove when you do pocket watch work even though videos from the old days showed the guys not wearing gloves or finger cots as they call them for uh, for watch work so but I'm wearing them now and I only need to put it on one hand because that's the only hand I have that touches anything the jewels actually were in mint condition on this watch I was super surprised based on its age that there were no cracks in the jewels whatsoever so jewels were in mint condition um, so there was no work I had to do replacing the jewels so so it's all good um, anyway thanks for watching my channel and um, I'll catch you next time. Uh, JD, watch my service. So JD here, and thanks for watching. And boo, goodbye, goodbye, salute. <laughs>